saying I'm going to wait. I'm not saying I'm going to stay here forever. But this morning we want to continue to look at the one we enjoy when God has mercy. Unbelievable wonders. And my goal for the last few weeks is to make a case why you should always pray to God for mercy. That's my ultimate goal. That's why I'm trying to draw your attention to how much difference it makes when God has mercy. It is so important that God has mercy on each and every one of us. You know why? Until you experience God's mercy, 
you can't experience his glory. In the last two sermons on this topic, we have looked at some of the wonders that can be attributed to the mercies of God. If you missed the first part and the second part, please download our app. The sermons are there and they are free. All you have to do is what? Download. And you can see the entire sermons that we preached even last year. For today, let's just give a quick summary so that you can catch up. We had looked at four things that happens when God has mercy. The first one is that when God has mercy, people that have forgotten to mention you suddenly just remember. It was what happened to Joseph when he was in jail. The second thing we looked at is that when God has mercy, your delays turn out to be advantages. It happened to Joseph as well. If he had been remembered two years before he was remembered, he probably would never have become the prime minister. My prayer is that every delay in your life will turn out to be an advantage. The third thing we looked at was that when God has mercy, even though your life took a detour and it looked as if everything has failed, because of his mercies, your life takes shape and destiny will be fulfilled. And the fourth thing we looked at was that when God has mercy, the little in your hand, he can multiply it to be a lot. This morning, we want to focus on one word. One word, capacity. Everybody say capacity. capacity. What happens to your capacity when God has mercy? I want us to rise on our feet and take our Bible reading first. Our Bible reading today will be taken from the book of Judges, chapter 6, verses 7 through 12. Judge, Judges 6, 7 through 12. And I read, And it came to pass when the children of Israel cried out to the Lord because of the Midianites, that the Lord sent a prophet to the children of Israel, who said to them, Thus says the Lord God of Israel, I brought you out, I brought you up from Egypt, and brought you out of the house of bondage, and I delivered you out of the hand of the Egyptians, and out of the hand of all who oppressed you, and drove them out before you, and gave you their land. Also, I said to you, I am the Lord your God. Do not fear the gods of the Amorites, in whose hand you dwell, for you have not obeyed my voice. Now the angel of the Lord came and sat under the terebinth tree, which was in opera, which belonged to Joaz, the Abiaz, Abiz right, <laughs> while his son Gideon threshed wheat in the wine press, in order to hide from the Midianites. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him and said to him, God is with you, you mighty man of valor. May the Lord bless his reading to us. In Jesus' name. Eternal, ever faithful God, the one who made it possible for us to be able to stand on our feet to hear the word of God, we thank you. We come to you this morning empty. Fill us. We come thirsty. Satisfy our thirst. You are the fountain that never runs dry. That's why we are confident that at the end of this service, we will go home holding something that is a new revelation to us. Help my utterance to be yours. Let my thoughts be your thoughts. 
let my words resonate from heaven. And let your children be blessed. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you. God bless you. Choir, the Lord bless you. If I, if I start from Judges chapter 6 to verse 6, you will see there that, as usual, the children of Israel had done what they normally do, which is also basically our character. After a while, they forgot their God, and they started misbehaving. And as they misbehaved, the Lord in his usual character also, sent people to oppress them. In this particular case, they were called Midianites. And the Midianites made sure that when the children of Israel worked, they did not enjoy the labor of their work. They ensured that when they get their harvest, they just come in one day and plunder their goods. And this continued for a long time, to the extent that the children of Israel were exhausted. And as usual, what they normally do is that when they get exhausted like that, they do what? They go back to God. Sounds like our story, doesn't it? So they went back to God. And the Bible says that, let's join the story in verse 7. The Bible says in verse 7, that it came to pass when the children of Israel cried out to the Lord because of the Midianites, because they were being oppressed. Now, the question this morning is not the fact that they cry. We, the cry of mercy is constant. But what we want to look at this morning is how did God react to that cry? How did God express mercy? If you go to verse 12, you will see the way God reacted to their cry. The Bible says that in response to their cry, an angel of the Lord appeared to somebody and said to him, the Lord is with you, you mighty man of valor. Now, if you read this Bible passage in isolation, there was no name. But there's something that the Lord did here that I pray that he will do to you. I want a better amen. amen. When God decided to have mercy on the children of Israel, he knew that for them to be delivered, they needed a deliverer. But he also knew that the deliverer, just like some of us here this morning, does not know the extent of the grace of God that he's carrying. Amen? Amen? So what we're going to look at this morning is when God has mercy, he makes you realize your capacity. Let's say that together. When God has mercy, He makes you realize your capacity. A lot of you are sleeping giants. What is capacity? Capacity is the innate ability to do To retain and to release. You cannot release more than what you have in you. So it is the ability to do what? To do. It is the ability to retain in terms of volume. Your capacity is the volume you can retain. Your capacity is also the volume or the quantity you can release. It is the maximum productivity or capability of a thing. 
Now, there's an unfortunate part of this. This capacity is not always known to the thing. Why? Because it's an exclusive knowledge of the manufacturer. There is nothing that is manufactured that knows the extent of its capacity, nothing. It's only the manufacturer that says you were calibrated to a hundred. Last week I said something, and I know it's, 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 it stayed with some of you because you kept on referring to it or praying with it. I said the misfortune of some people is that they are what? They are loaded but not needed. That's the misfortune. That's the misfortune of a lot of people. They are fully equipped. but they are not needed. This category of people know, everybody say no. They know that they have it. As a matter of fact, the knowledge of what they have has become a torture. They know they have it. They know they have what it takes for that job or that promotion. They are just not given a chance. This category of people know that they are pretty, they are nice in that inside out. And yet nobody is asking for them. They know. When they look at the mirror, they can see the goodness of God. But it does not translate to hello. But the category of people I'm talking about today is different. It's totally different from the category I spoke about last week. This category of people do not even know what they have. They do not know their capacity. They do not know what God has endowed them with. Solomon saw this abnormality or abnormalis. In the book of Exodus chapter 10 verse 5, and he said, it is an error proceeding from the ruler. I don't want to go there because if I go to that portion, that's another sermon entirely. We will have to find out who the ruler is at every point of time. But that's, I don't want to be too complex this morning. We can do that on a Wednesday. But he saw, he noticed that there was an error. Something was wrong. Then he goes forward, he goes on to describe the error. He says, folly is set in great dignity, while the rich is set in lowly places. He goes on to describe the error. He says, I have seen servants on horses, while princes walk on the ground like servants. It's abnormal. It's an error. But the only reason why these princes are walking on the ground as servants is because of what? They lack the knowledge of their capacity. They don't know who they are. They don't know what they have. They don't know what God has placed in them. And that's why I want to say this morning that when God has mercy, he corrects the error of placement. He corrects the error of the way you are perceived, the way you are placed, and where you place yourself. I, I stand on this order and I pray for whoever you are. That the Lord will correct the error of your current placement. Amen. There's an error that you have lived with. You are walking when you should be riding. I pray that the Lord Almighty will put you back on your horse. Amen. I want a better amen. amen. How does God put you back on your horse? How does he do it?
He makes you realize your potentials. He makes you realize your designed capacity. He makes you know that your present form does not define your designed potential. He makes you just know that. Maybe you are here this morning. Over the years, you have started to see yourself shrink. You shrink in the way you perceive yourself. You have been intimidated and you are timid. Now you feel like an ant, but there's a lion in you. I pray that the Lord Almighty will correct that error in your mind. <laughs> in the name of Jesus. How does God do it? He makes you realize who you are. The Bible says in Judges chapter 6, verse 12, that an angel appeared to a man. And he called the man in his created capacity, not in his present form. When the angel saw the man, the man was timid, hard working, but he was hiding behind the bushels. He was working hard, but he felt like he was the smallest of the smalls. He felt that amongst his nation, he was a nobody. He felt that he was so unimportant and insignificant. But when the angel of God called him, he didn't call him in the way he perceived himself. The angel called him in the way heavens saw him. You will see yourself the way heaven sees you. Amen. The angel of the Lord came to him and said, you, mighty man of valor. He called him in his designed capacity. His created capacity. But because God knows that it is impossible for a de deliverer to walk alone, no matter how much I have a dream for this church, no matter how much I, I weep for your life, I can't do it alone. I need 300 men. I need support. I need people who think like I think, who think that God can do all things. And that was what God did for did. God did not only show Gideon that he was a man with capacity. He called him and called 300 people at the same time. The Bible says that at the first call, 32,000 people showed up. 32,000 of them showed up. All of them imagining that they had capacity. But not everybody has capacity. The first thing he did was that he told them, if you are afraid, indicate. And that's why I pray for you this morning that fear will not be your portion. <laughs> Even when you feel the fear, you will do it anyway. So when he said, are you afraid, 20,000 of them left out of fear. There were 10,000 left. Or maybe 22,000 left. There were 10,000 left. And then he called on 10,000 10, 10, left. He wanted to know if they were careless men. God does not use careless people. And he said, go to the river and see how you will drink water. And some of them were lapping like dogs. And some will just kneel down on one leg and take the water. Men of war. But up to that time, those 300 men did not know their capacity. But that day they knew their capacity. You will know your capacity. Amen. Let me tell you what happens when God has mercy. Because not only did he show Gideon that he, he had capacity, not only did he show these 300 men that they had capacity. When God has mercy, he does something else. Many people are living today, they are afraid of their enemies. Simply because they don't realize their capacity. And that's why you need to pray for mercy. You know why? Because when God shows mercy, when God has mercy on you, another thing he does is that he makes you realize that the enemy you are afraid of is afraid of you. 
That's another thing he does. He gives you unbelievable boldness. That the things that you are presently afraid of, you go to your office thinking that that boss is afraid. But before you came in, that guy was afraid of you too. And that was what God did. God made these people hear a voice. And I pray that tonight you will hear a voice. That will increase your boldness. The Lord said to him, go and listen in the camp of your enemies. Why would God say that? This is a man that was already afraid of these people. He said, move closer, go and listen. And it happened to on the same day that the Lord said to him, arise, go down against the camp, for I have delivered into your hand. And God said to him, if you are afraid, go listen. Verse 10, it says, but if you are afraid to go down, go down to the camp with Pura, your servant. When God had told him to go and take over the Midianites, Gideon was still afraid with his 300 men. He now said to him, you know what, if you are still afraid, go and listen to what people are saying. And I can bet, I'm sure you know what Gideon said. God, I told you I'm afraid, you said I should go and listen. But verse 11, God says to him, and you shall hear what they say. And afterwards, your hand shall be strengthened to go down against the camp. God said, after you hear what they are saying, you'll be bolder. What are they saying? Verse 13 and 14. And Gideon, and when Gideon had come, there was a man telling a dream to his companion. And he said, I have had a dream. To my surprise, a loaf of valley bread tumbled into the camp of Midian, and it came to a tent and stuck or struck it so that it fell and overturned and the tent collapsed. And then somebody said, ah, ah, this is nothing else but the sword of Gideon, the son of Joash. A man of Israel, into his hands God has delivered us, and the whole camp scattered. By the power of the Most High God, God will have mercy on you. Amen. And you will realize that those that you are afraid of are also afraid of you. God will increase your capacity to pray. I want a better amen. amen. It is in the place of prayer that you hear God. God will increase your capacity to attract. Oh, God. What is your prayer this year? The glory of God will be seen upon me. That's your prayer. Wherever you step into, the glory of God. Let me tell you, the glory of God attracts. God will increase your capacity to attract. Amen. God will increase your capacity to think. Amen. What I'm saying that God will make it possible that you process the same thing that you have seen in the past, you process them better. God will give you the capacity to retain. Amen. Maybe I should say something about this. Until you can retain, you cannot be transformed. You know, if something passes through a vessel very quickly, it, it literally does not affect the vessel. But it's when you can retain what you are hearing this morning, and you can process it, then it will transform you. It will renew your mind. God will give you an increased capacity to retain. Amen. Many of us are not good containers. What did I say? What does a good container do? Pardon? A good container will take its goods home from the place of harvest to the house. Nothing will drop. But a leaking container gets home empty. You will not get home empty. 
not only will God give you the capacity to retain, to contain every hole in your life that is causing the drain, God Almighty will fill them. Yeah. Let me close. Tell the next person to you. You don't need any more. You don't need anything more to become great. All you need, God has given you. You know what your prayer should be? <laughs> what did I call it? Looking. You know what your prayer should be? When you have all you need already inside you, the mercy you are praying for is that God will give you a knowledge of your capacity. Amen? Amen. Why is this prayer so important? That God must reveal you to you. People are not limited by what they lack. People are limited by what they have, but they don't know how to use. That's what happens to the nation of Africa. That's why we have so much resources, and yet, we are beggars. Because what we have, we don't know how to use it. People are limited because of unutilized capacity. That's why God must reveal you to you first before he can reveal you to what? To the world. How does he do that, church? I want to close. Let me tell you something. Those who are sitting down up there, what they see is different from what you see. I'm not saying they have a better view. Some of them are sleeping already, so <laughs> I'm just kidding. But the point I'm trying to make, church, is this, because I want you to pray smartly. What you see is a function of where you sit. And there are some times that the difference between you and the greatest within you is a relocation of your seat. When you see from a peripheral view, you see more. You have a better understanding. May the Lord give you a higher view. Amen. Not a higher view of the president. Not a higher view of Pastor Doe. No, a higher view of yourself. Because what is going to help you is already in you. You just need to know what your capacity is. And your life will change. Nothing changed in Gideon. Nothing changed. He was the same man on Monday that became a warrior on Tuesday that became a deliverer on Wednesday. The same man. But something changed in the way he thought, the way he perceived himself, the way he looked at life. That will happen to you. Yeah. Judges 6 verse 14. The Lord came to him, and, and I close with this. He says, go in this might of yours. Did he add any might to him? No. Go in the might that already exists within you, and you shall save Israel with the might that is already in you. You will save your family with what you have. Amen. You will save your household with what you have. Amen. You will save your country with what you have. Amen. You will save the body of Christ. With what you have. Amen. If only you will pray that God will have mercy on you and give you the capacity, the understanding of who you truly are. Let us rise on our feet and take one prayer. Go in this might of yours, says the Lord. With the might that is already existing in you, God can conquer the world. 
All you need to do is to pray for mercy this morning. I want you to cry to God this morning and say, Lord, Heavenly Father, have mercy on me. Reveal me to me. Let me have a full knowledge of all that you have endowed me with. Let me have a full knowledge of who you have created me to be. Let me have a full knowledge of my capacity, of my capability, in the name of Jesus. I want to pray with all your heart this morning. It takes mercy. It takes mercy for God to reveal your children to them. It takes mercy for God to reveal you to you. Lord, let me have mercy. Let me enjoy your mercy. As we are praying for mercy, I want to talk to another set of people. Please don't stop praying this morning. As we are praying for mercy, I want to talk to another set of people. You cannot hear the shepherd. You cannot hear the shepherd if you are not a sheep. You cannot even understand the shepherd until you become a sheep. If you are asking God to have mercy on you, and he comes to reveal you to you, how do you hear him? Unless you become one of his. Somebody was given a testimony this morning that God Almighty has opened her ears to hear. That's one of the greatest testimonies you can give. Because the moment you can hear God, there's no limit to your progress. Are you here this morning you want to become a sheep? Are you here this morning you want to give your life to Jesus? I know, I know you have been half in, half out, but today you want to go all the way in. You want to go all the way in so that you can be a sheep that the shepherd will speak to and he will understand. If you raise your hands above your head as others are praying, just lift your hands. I want to connect with you this morning. If you're in that category, God bless you. If you're in that category, just lift your hands and wave at me. I want to connect with you so I can pray with you. If you're in that category, you are saying, Lord, I want to be a sheep. Yes, I want to hear you. I want to be called yours. I want to be known so that I can know who I am. Please don't stop praying for mercy if you are already a sheep. Ask the mercy of God this morning that you will know yourself, you will know your capacity. You will know how dangerous you are to the kingdom of darkness. You will know that those who you are afraid of are afraid of you. You will know without a doubt that we serve a God that stands by you. Those of you who have raised up your hand, you want to say to God this morning that Heavenly Father, I thank you. I thank you for bringing me to your sanctuary this morning because you have given me a privilege to receive you into my life. I accept you and I ask God Almighty that as your sheep henceforth, let me hear you. Speak to me. Give me guidance. Deliver my life from every sin and iniquity. And give me the opportunity to end with you in eternity. Thank you for those of you who have given your life. And those of you who are praying, I want you to bring your prayer to an end this morning. As I decree and I lift up my voice in the name of Jesus. I speak as your oracle, Heavenly Father. I speak as one who you speak to. I speak this morning as the authority that you have put over this house. You have given me the power to bless and I bless this ones. I decree this morning in the name that is above every other name. That every little one here that thinks that they're just a cub will become a full-blown lion. Yeah. Everyone here, Lord Almighty, that sees themselves as a Lilliputian will suddenly become a giant. Yeah. I pray, Heavenly Father, Lord, that this will know what your thoughts were when you created them. Mighty men and women of valor. Amen. Let them know who they are in you. Amen. So that they can do wonders Amen. for you. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you, in Jesus' name we pray.
On behalf of the pastors of RCCG Kings Court Chapel, we would like to say a big thank you for your gifts and sacrifices to the ministry. Your giving helps us to spread God's word to the lost all over the world. As you give today, do remember that you have different forms of giving. If you would like to pay by card, please use any of the designated kiosks located in the back of the sanctuary. If you would like to pay using your smartphone, you can download the Givelify app, select RCCG Kings Court Chapel, select your giving amount, and the purpose of your donation. You can also text your donation to 770-285-0209 or simply give with cash or checks. Whichever method you choose, please remember to indicate appropriately on the envelopes. Praise the Lord. The Bible says in Proverbs 18, 16, Thy man's gift makes room for him and brings him before great men. Um, let us rise up and give cheerfully unto the Lord. I don't know. 